Hi, it's Tanya with Red Cardinal Crafts, and today I want to show you this smash book that I made last week. I'm so excited um, because I made something. I'm so proud of myself. Um, this is all stuff that I had collected from uh, when we lived in Florida from 2007 to 2010. This doesn't contain Disney stuff. It's just all the other stuff. I'm going to do a separate Disney journal. So I'm going to do a flip through of this smash book and um, and show you what I did. It's not finished. I still have journaling to do in it and everything, but I just, I'm just so excited that I made something. Uh, and I cleared up one of the bins that I had over here filled with um, things from Florida. So let me flip my camera around and show you. But first I, um, I wanna show you something I bought. This is my desk chair. I bought it at Costco when we lived in Seattle and I put my dad's old Bermuda sweatshirt over the back of it. And it's a great chair, but my lower back, my upper back, my neck gets so sore after a while of working at that um, at my desk when I'm on that chair. So I bought this on Amazon last week. It's a kneeling chair and you can see it's fairly lightweight. Um, it has four caster wheels on it. Um, this is where your knees go and this is where your butt goes. It's not very high. I haven't <laughs> broken my neck trying to get on the thing. I bought it off of Amazon. It was one of those Amazon choice things. Um, and it had good reviews. Uh, in Canada here, I had to pay 200 bucks for it. I'm sure in the States, it's like 14.99 and they throw in a free one. I have no idea. My point is that prices in Canada are stupidly expensive. Um, the only complaint I have is the wheels are kind of crap on it. So yesterday I ordered some new caster wheels for it and they're arriving um, today sometime. So uh, they are like rollerblade type wheels. And um, I'm sure I'll break my neck once I get those on here. It's great. You can kind of swivel around. You can roll and stuff. But my desk, I'm down in an unfinished basement. So I'm on cement floor. I have a carpet remnant that our landlord gave us. And it stops right at the edge of my desk. So the back wheels are on the carpet and they seem fine. But the front wheels are kind of disintegrating on the cement. Um, I thought they were marking it up, but it's actually basically shaving down the wheels. I am well within the weight restrictions for this um, chair, but the wheels are just cheap plastic. So that's my only complaint. The company I got it from, it's um, it's made by Dragon, D-R-A-G-O-N-N. -N. There's two N's. Um, but yeah, it arrived quickly. The metal is like, it's all like a metal base and everything. The way you're seated, um, it keeps your back straight and the seat bends at a little bit of an angle. I describe it as like starting to go up on a teeter totter. It's at a little bit of an angle and you don't feel like you're going to fall backwards off of the thing. Your knees, it's not, it's like from your knee down. It's like your shin is on the, is on the stool. And I'm the type of person that I cannot kneel. Like I can kneel down, but I can't stay like that. My legs fall asleep. I lose circulation in my legs, but you're at more of an angle. So your bum and thighs come this way and then your, um, your legs go that way. So you're not squished onto your knees. It's really weird. It's hard to describe, but it's, I find it really comfortable and you completely forget that this is how you're sitting. It's really strange, but it's been, it's been really good. I've had it for a week now and I made this while I was sitting on this thing and I just got so immersed in what I was doing. I totally forgot I was sitting on this kind of chair. So anyway, let me flip my camera around and I'll show you what I've made here. I ended up putting my wooden, uh, thing back up over my desk so that I could shoot overhead. So that's back on here. But um, all right, let me flip you. So this is my smash book. It's eight and a half by 11 um, chipboard paper that I used for the front and back cover. Um, the paper I used is from a paper pack I had called Jet Set and it had the United States of America. I thought that was perfect because um, we were moving from Canada down to Florida and it was our first time living in the States. On the side here, I just tied some ribbons. I started off with the blue and orange for the Florida Gators colors and um, I added some pink just because that was fun. My friend Mariel uh, gave me this ribbon with flip-flops on it and uh, it was really cute because she is from Puerto Rico and can speak Spanish. A lot of my friends could speak Spanish. And the only words I ever learned in Spanish were for flip-flop and for pumpkin. 
Um, so yeah, so that was ribbon from Mariel, which she informed me the other day she still has some of that ribbon in her craft room. These are a couple wristbands. The visitor one, no idea. Can't remember why we have this, but it was in the Florida bucket, and someday I may remember why I have that. This one says birthday party. Uh, Bryn was invited to a classmate's birthday, and he invited the entire class to go to the Nickelodeon um, Hotel and Resort, and there was a big water park there. Of course, I tagged along. I wanted to have fun, too. <laughs> it was amazing. It was really cool. This is a little bracelet that Bryn got. She did uh, Taekwondo, and this is just a little bracelet they handed out to the kids one time. This chipboard piece is time of my life, and living in Florida was definitely the time of my life. I had so much fun living there. A uh, little chipboard alligator. I just poked a hole in him so I could tie him on here. And this is just yarn that I used. It's a little tangly, so I may switch that out. I'm not sure. This little guy I got in a bubblegum machine when my scrapbook friends and I were out shopping. And then this is a Barbie shoe. It's one of the kids' Barbie shoes, and I made it into an earring because one of our friends had teeny tiny little feet, and I used to tease her that she had um, Barbie shoes because um, her feet were so small. So I wore that to a crop one time uh, just to tease her. So yeah, so we open it up and it has more of the paper from that set um, and it just said the places you'll go. So I thought that was appropriate. And on the very back, I have um, airplane paper because after Florida, we were taken off for Bermuda. So I thought that was appropriate. Um, when we were getting ready to leave Canada and move to Florida, I kept uh, a journal and I was writing down all the stuff um, to do with our move. So I decided to, um, instead of throw the journal out, I decided to keep the cover of it because it had been on a coil binding as well, and I just added it to here. These are the papers that I had um, in that book. I just have them flipped over because there is some personal stuff on there, things that I wrote about. Um, so that's from the journal. And then I have just a list of things that we had to do. We had to do laundry. I had to pack the clothes for Florida. The kids were little, so I had to bring some toys, carry-ons. We had to take Lucky, our hamster, back to the store because we couldn't take him with us and no one wanted him. Um, and just other things that had been happening that week that we were getting ready to move. These are the canine cards, the dogs that were at the Orlando airport. Someone must have given them to the kids. I don't really remember that. This next thing I'm going to show you, it may be disturbing to some people because it is an animal and it's not alive. Um, it is an alligator. And I remember Scott had um, sent this to me. Um, it was an alligator that was found in a yard in Florida. This thing was massive. This game warden is actually six foot five. <laughs> so this thing is 23 feet long. It was massive. And here's um, a picture of it swimming in, it's either like a pond, a lake or a retention pond. I'm not sure. And it has an entire deer in its mouth. So yeah, sent that to mom and dad and they were <laughs> absolutely terrified. They were like, you need to keep an eye on the kids. You got to make sure they're safe and don't put them near the water. So <laughs> they were fine, but there were gators around, not that big, but there were definitely gators around um, our neighborhood and around uh, Orlando. Little flamingo that I had for my embellishments. I have to glue his legs down a little bit more because they're starting to go crazy here. Uh, I just cut out the little American flag from that paper pack as well. And then this is just a old looking um, vintage Florida flyer. And I just put that on here. And then this is the stuff that we were up to the last week that we were um, living in Canada. We went down to Halifax for Easter and um, the Packers came and then we had a snowstorm the day before we left for Florida. Then we flew to Florida 6 a.m. And then on the 15th of April, we went to Disney to Magic Kingdom with the kids for the first time. And then the next day, the 16th, was Kerrigan's fourth birthday. So the kids were just very little when we moved there. Kerrigan had just turned four um, two days after we got there. And Bryn was about to turn um, seven in June. This is the first place that we lived. This is um, a resort. Uh, that was the beginning of our hotel life. Um, this is Cypress Palms. It's down in Kissimmee. So we lived there for just over a month. Um, and this is just the activity guide. They had like a little activity center and there was crafts and bingo by the pool and all that kind of stuff. Um, so lots for the kids to do. We took them to SeaWorld shortly after we got there and they were absolutely amazed. Um, and yes, I've seen blackfish, but I must say the looks on the kids' faces when Shamu came up out of that pool was just incredible. They were shocked um, how big that that 
uh, whale was. Uh, I have a little um, palm tree embellishment. It had a little crease here in the trunk, so I just put a piece of washi tape there. This was the this was this resort, um, so that was the map. And we stayed. I think we were in one of these buildings along here because we were very close to the activity building and the and one of the pools. On this side is just um, business cards. Scott, you see his dry cleaning done, our doctor, eye doctor, uh, pediatrician for the kids, the pharmacy, our dentist. Oh my God, I adored my dentist down there. Um, I was always terrified of uh, the dentist and he was very nice and um, I got over my fear a little bit. <laughs> These are letters that the Tooth Fairy had left the girls. They, she always left a little tiny, tiny letter because the Tooth Fairy is little. Um, and then this is the other resort we stayed at. Um, we stayed here for a week. Um, it's on a uh, Disney property. It's called Bonnet Creek and it's just beautiful. They have a lazy river. It's just gorgeous. Um, when family would come down, they'd stay there. Um, and it was nice. What we did was we moved into our house and then for a week, the kids and I would go to the house and unpack all day. Scott would be at work. And then when the kids were getting bored and, and a little antsy, we would leave and we'd head back to the resort. I'd take them for a swim and then we'd have a nice dinner and um, relax in our nice and tidy room. And then we would uh, go back to the house the next day and unpack. So we did that for like a week. Highly recommend staying in a hotel <laughs> while you're trying to unpack your house when you have little kids. Um, this is a little letter that Bryn had given me. It has some Hannah Montana stickers on it. And inside I have the little note that she had given me. And this is one that she had made for Scott. A little drawing of Bryn and Scott. And she just said, I have a little sister. I am seven. I am in grade two. <laughs> I have fun from Bryn to Scott. And then this one was, I must have been sick. It says, Dear Mummy, I hope you feel better than you are now <laughs> from us. <laughs> um, so yeah, or it was US. Maybe it was the US, like USA. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just so cute to look back at the little things that they used to do like that, all their little drawings and things. Um, I just did some blank paper so I could do some journaling. This is my nephew, Evan. This was many years ago. This was in 2007. He's now 26. Um, but this was from mom. She cut out this article in the paper um, that Evan was in and she just uh, put my name on there. So I love that I have her handwriting. Uh, the uh, space shuttle, this was in 2007. This is out of the Orlando Sentinel newspaper. And it was June 9th. And we actually saw the shuttle. We were down in Daytona. We had just gone down for the weekend. And um, we were watching it on TV. And then we went out onto our patio of the hotel. We were right on the beach. And we could see the shuttle going up over the ocean. It was very cool. Um, this is a letter from my friend in Canada, Helga. Her daughter, um, her oldest daughter, she has four daughters. Um, her oldest one went to school with Bryn. And this is uh, just out of a flyer for Daytona. It just shows the intercoastal waterway and, and just where we were on the beach there. We have some tickets to NASA. We had gone there um, a few times, actually. This is the little poster that Barnes & Noble had put out the year that the last book was coming out. And it was being released July 21st. Um, at midnight. So I told Scott that I wanted to go. I woke him up around 11 o'clock and I said, I'm going. And he goes, okay, don't die. And I said, all right. So <laughs> I put this little piece of paper to represent the lineup that I was in and I'm going to journal about it. But this is the receipt um, for when I did get my book and it's starting to fade a little bit. So I did a copy of it on here. Um, but I checked out of Barnes and Noble at 104 AM. So I was in the lineup for <laughs> about mm, an hour and a half or so, um, before I got my book. And I also bought, um, a sketchbook while I was there. World's largest McDonald's. It's over on I drive. I had taken the kids there before. Lanuba, mom and dad came down to visit um, and they watched the kids and Scott and I were able to go to Cirque du Soleil. So that was lovely. Adventure golf, little pirate mini golf thing. There's a bunch of them around Florida. So we had taken the kids to that one. Disney's Haunted Mansion. It was closed that summer because they were doing renovations. And I was so disappointed because Annette and Brian um, 
uh, came down with the kids and I was really hoping for Brian to see the Haunted Mansion because he always did a haunted house at their house. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it was shut down that summer. This is a note from mom that she had um, given me with a little notebook and she was like, keep track of it. You're good at keeping records and it'll be nice um, to have memories for the girls. Um, the year that we moved there, uh, Ikea opened and I was so excited. I went on opening day. I took Kerrigan with me. She was only four. She wasn't in school yet. Broom was at school and Kerrigan and I were there. There was like the news was there and they had helicopters flying overhead. It was this whole big thing. And they were giving away gift cards to the first so many people in the door. And I had been standing in line with this woman the whole time. And when we went in the main doors together, she went to the right to get a gift card. And I went to the left. She won a hot dog. I won 250 bucks. Um, I felt so guilty. And uh, But she was very happy for me. And I ended up using that that Christmas to buy some um, things for the kids' rooms. And this was a little note for me to take to Ikea from Bryn. Um, she wanted some bins for her room white, W-I-T-E, white bins, and some white bins for Kerrigan. Bryn used to do um, Taekwondo, and these were little stars that they would give them if they did something um, good during class, and Kerrigan got to go and participate one time, so they gave her a little star. This is from the kids' school. The music teacher wrote a song. Um, it was called... Uh, um, the Eagles of Sunset Park. And the day they did this, because it was a grand opening of the school, and um, they had a big ceremony. It was outside, and the kids were all in their little matching school shirts, and they were singing the Eagle song. And I looked up, and just then there was an eagle flying overhead. It was crazy. It was a very American moment for me. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. This is one of the kids' things that they played with one time. This was to the Masters of Kung Fu from Queen Kui Kui. Queen Kui Kui was a doll that they wrapped up to look like a mummy, <laughs> and they wrote a letter to the Masters of Kung Fu, um, or from the Masters of Kung Fu, and this was supposed to be the hieroglyphics. So I showed this to them the other day, and they got a kick out of it. <laughs> oh my god, they were nuts. Um, some more blank pages for me to journal on. This was the Christmas card I made. My scrapbook skills were on point that year. Uh, I was very excited because I got an embossing heat gun thing. I was all excited. Uh, this is the Christmas letter that I wrote home to everybody. And the kids were like, oh, you wrote a letter to tell everybody what you did all year? And I was like, yeah. And they both looked at each other and went, oh my God, there wasn't social media. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. So you would write a family letter and send it out to friends and family at Christmas to tell them what you'd been up to. But anyway. They were shocked that there was like no um, Instagram back then. Um, Merry Christmas little bookmark that Bryn had made. This was the Santa at uh, Millennium Mall. If you're ever in Orlando during the Christmas holidays, you have to go over to Millennium Mall. I think they still do this. It's Hollyville and it's a whole Christmas setup. It's absolutely beautiful and um, it's really unique. And the Santa comes out he doesn't have his red coat on. He's actually dressed as if he's been in like the toy workshop or whatever. And he does this whole photo session with your kids if you choose to. Um, we used to get the CD and it's a whole bunch of photos and he poses and he gets the kids to pose and it's unbelievable. So that was back in 2007. So I don't know if they do it anymore. Um, I'm sure they do or do something like it, but they give you the disc. Um, I forget how much it is, but, and I don't know how they do it now, but it was always very, uh, very cool. So little um, coaster from Chili's. Gaylord Palms is an amazing hotel too. It's just outside of um, Disney. Um, it's across the highway, across the I-4, and it's called the Gaylord Palms. Beautiful hotel. You can just walk around, see all the decorations, and they do this thing for Travelocity. It's a little contest, and you can find all the gnomes, and they're hidden throughout the, the building and stuff, and there's little clues. We used to just take the kids over to do that for fun. The Gaylord Palms also does ice, which is incredible. It's all these ice sculptures and they give you a winter coat to wear. It's, it's amazing. They had a little machine there where the kids could type in their name and stuff and then Santa would um, print them out a letter. This is a spreadsheet that Scott made. He loves doing spreadsheets. These were all the activities we found in a magazine. It was entertainment um, for the holidays throughout Orlando and um, Disney and the other parks. Uh, so we kept that on the fridge and checked everything off. And then Scott made a spreadsheet. So we went to Animal Kingdom on November 24th. On December 1st, we went to Epcot and so on and so on. So he just made it colorful and fun and we kept it on the fridge. This was, again, the Orlando... Um, sentinel newspaper and this was just an ad they had about all the 
stuff that was going on at the Disney parks over the holidays. So we had that to refer to as well. This page here, these are just some little cards. I used to put them in the kids' lunch boxes um, and just wish them a happy day. Um, Hannah Montana, I took the kids to the movie and when we came home, I had the tickets in my pocket and it went through the washer and dryer. So they kind of scorched a little bit, but they're all right. Um, this is a card from my scrapbook friends. I couldn't make it to one of our crops. So they had written out a nice card and said they hope to see me next time. Little Valentine card from my homie, <laughs> Mariel. It's just a little card that says homies, which looks like this guy. So I don't know if there's a connection. I can't remember. Storytellers Club. This was a scrapbook club and you got um, packs of things in the mail. I did it for a couple months. I mostly just wanted the bag, um, which I still have and I have all my Disney stuff in it. This is the receipt. I took a copy of it of um, my Cricut Expression that I bought. That was the first big um, purchase for scrapbooking. And then this is the Ikea receipt for the black desk that I had for scrapbooking name tag. I went to the scrapbook expo with my friends. It was so much fun. I've always, I had always wanted to go to something like that. <clears throat> my friends and I got together and did a whole scrapbook Thanksgiving um, weekend thing. We did a little sleepover at one of our friends' houses and we just had so much fun. And the next day we put together a little Thanksgiving dinner. Everyone brought some food and it was really nice. Um, this is a punch card from one of the stores that we used to scrapbook at. Um, my name tag from something that was my ticket for that expo another scrapbook card this is my friend Renee who had the little tiny Barbie shoes my hair I went through a little bit of a redhead phase because I was trying to do my hair myself um, out of a box and it was a hot mess but anyway <laughs> the night of the sleepover um, I was being a fool and I was singing the 12 days of Christmas but using scrapbook items and someone wrote down um, all the stuff that I was singing about. <laughs> so I kept it. It was a piece of paper that someone had started to cut a circle out of and I was going to trim it and everything. And I'm like, no, you know what? That's exactly what it looked like. So I'm leaving it. This is a note from my friend Stacy. Well, I had written down what she said because I was trying to scrapbook something and um, I couldn't remember who the person was in my photo. So Stacy said, this is how you do decisions for what photos to use in your scrapbook pages. A, you don't know who she is and B, you think she's dead. So that's how you decide what photos to use. Um, this is more of that ribbon. And then these are just some cards that I had. Um, this is a trip to Halifax that we did in 2008. So I documented all of it in a little notebook and I just ripped the pages out um, to keep in here. This was the cover of um, one of Kerrigan's birthday parties. She had an art themed birthday party. Um, she was a little ballerina, Kerrigan. She was in, um, it was a whole circus theme, the entire show and her little group did Webkins joins the circus and she was a little cat. Oh my God, she was adorable. I have a picture of her in, a, in further along in here that I'll show you. Um, apparently Kerrigan was part of a science Olympiad. None of us remember it, but it was on May 1st of 2009 and she got a participant ribbon. Um, this was when I had joined Weight Watchers. This is representing me each time I went to get weighed in. Um, I ended up losing a total of 30 pounds when we lived there. And then we moved to Bermuda and I found it again. So that's great. Um, this was a box that a keychain had come in when you lose, um, when you lose 25 pounds, you got a keychain and then you put all your little charms on it. I had two of these books and I just ripped the cover off of one of them, took the extra stars that I had and glued them onto this one. I have the monthly passes, the one from when I first started and the one from, I had all of them, but I just kept the one from when I started and the one from when I finished. And then I just took all the weigh-in sheets that I had um, and stapled those together just so I can remember. And then this is mom and dad's house. This was when they had seen the listing for it. And um, yeah, it's just crazy to see the colors that um, the person that lived in it before them um, had used. Uh, they moved in there uh, in 2008, right before Christmas. And then they came down on December 5th with um, our niece, Kylie, and brought her down to surprise the kids. So they had just moved into the house, boxes everywhere, and they jumped on a plane and came down to visit. This piece of paper just has some names and phone numbers on it. 
from Florida. This is out of um, a calendar that I had, and it's just little things that I wanted to remember from when we lived there. And this is the listing for mom and dad's house when they first got it. Um, this is our 2008 Christmas letter that I had sent to everybody. And these are the girls. Bryn was on a soccer team. They were called the Golden Girls. Their colors were yellow, black, and white. And then this is Kerrigan in her little cat costume. It was so cute. It was a little tutu. Um, so that was our letter. And then we went to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas. And then this is when Mom and Dad came down. And we were writing down like what we should do and when and what days of the week they were there. Scott took the girls to Gatorland at one point. I never did go there. Um, he took them, I think I was at a scrapbook thing <clears throat> and these are their bracelets. Um, so they had a good time there. Bryn ended up holding a snake or touching a snake. I don't know, something to do with snakes. I don't even want to know. Um, <laughs> I'm terrified. And this was Bryn's ninth birthday. She took a classmate with her, um, that day to Magic Kingdom and they had a great time. Uh, we went to, uh, Lanuba. We took the kids for, uh, their grading gift that year and they really enjoyed it. This is mom and dad's last Thanksgiving in their house in 2009. That's them in the kitchen. And um, this is the girls. Kerrigan looks like a little granny. That was her in grade one and Bryn was in grade four. This is us at ICE um, that Christmas with Scott's parents. And these are the winter coats that they give you. It's really cold in there. Scott went with work at one point. And one of the employees had to leave. He's like, it's too cold. I can't, I can't do it. It's like minus 13 in there. So yeah, we had hats and scarves and gloves. It does get um, chilly in there. And then Annette came down to surprise me and I had no idea she was coming. It was so much fun. So then we just wrote down, I just wrote down all the things that we did while she was there. It was so much fun. Blank page for some journaling. This is mom and dad's last Christmas letter that they had sent out. And then um, holidays around the world, this was at the kids' school, and they went around with a little passport um, and uh, stamped all their things. I think this was for Kerrigan's class specifically, I think. Um, and then the four of us went over to the school, and they were um, showing the movie up. And then Bryn was in some um, Taekwondo tournaments, and she won some medals and trophies and everything. So um, she had a lot of fun with that. She was very good at it. Um, we went down to St. Augustine in Florida. <clears throat> On the way to St. Augustine, Scott ended up getting the call that he had an interview in Bermuda. Um, so we had to pull over the side of the highway. This is a receipt from when the kids were in Halifax and they got their ears pierced for the first time. And while we were in St. Augustine, there was a person that made rings with your name. Um, and they were little silver rings and um, he engraved their names in it because you can never find anything <laughs> with their names. Um, the Bay Hill uh, Arnold Palmer Invitational. Scott and I went to that. I ended up getting Mike Weir's uh, autograph on a hat. I was very excited about that. Scott ended up going in, it was either two, I don't want to say it's 2008. Um, he went and he was sitting in these stands with a guy that he worked with and they saw Tiger Woods win. So it was very cool. Um, this is uh, just some blank paper again that I can do some journaling on and this was from mom's funeral and I had designed their headstone because mom's wedding flower was calla lily so I did the sketch and then um, we submitted it to the the cemetery and they had it made into their stone so pretty proud of that and um, this was us in dad's backyard the day of mom's funeral Kerrigan was seven and Bryn was nine just about to turn um 10 in four days from there. And then on the back here, we stayed at the Holiday Inn Express in Halifax. It was the night before we moved to Bermuda. Yeah. And then this is a card that Annette gave me and it had all the things that we had done while we were in Halifax um, before we moved to Bermuda. And then this was Bryn's birthday card that dad had given her, but he wrote it to her from him and mom. And it just said, happy birthday and thank you for visiting with me in the hospital. Have a wonderful summer. It was Bryn's birthday card that year. And then some more room to uh, journal and then it finishes with the places you'll go. So that is my first smash journal. I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I still want to do a little bit more in it. I want to do um, some journaling and stuff, but I'm pretty pleased that it's all in a book. So thank you for watching my flip through. I plan to 
keep doing this and um, collect all our memories in books like this. I think it's great. It was so nice. I was able to finish it the other day, take it upstairs and have these guys flip through it. The kids, because they were so young when we lived there, they don't remember some of this stuff. So I want to write um, in basically all the stuff that I just told you guys, um, just so they remember it when they're flipping through it someday. Um, but yeah, I, I want to finish up with all the other stuff that I have and do this, whether it's going to be like a junk journal or smash books or whatever, but I just want to get it all done and in books and I'm pretty happy with this one. So I hope you guys are good. Um, I do have some craft show stuff to get working on. I'm going to do that this week. I have a painting that I have to get done as well. Um, and, um, yeah, then I'll get doing some journal stuff and I'll do some process videos. Once I feel more comfortable about what I'm doing, I'm kind of all over the place with trying to figure out how to make these. Um, but once I get more comfortable with it, I'll do some process videos and some journal with me videos. So I hope you guys are um, happy and healthy and everyone's safe. And um, yeah, I hope you guys are good. And I'll be back with some more videos soon. All right, take care, guys. See ya.